All browsers come with a different set of exclusive features that make them each uniquely different. But there are some features that they have in common, and that's what we will be talking about today. If you recall, a browser is an app installed on all your devices that allows you to surf the web. It's the app you go to when you want to go to appleguideweb.com, apple.com, or amazon.com. Last week we went more into depth into what a browser is and how it works. This week will be about common features that all browsers share. Starting off with the address bar, which can be found at the very top of your browser window. The address bar is a text box that holds the Uniform Resource Locator, or shortened to URL, and commonly referred to as a web address. The URL is essentially the file path to the page you're currently looking at. Now let's dive a little deeper and analyze the URL for this blog post. HTTPS, at the beginning, refers to one of the many internet protocols. HTTPS stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure and is short to HTTPS. This tells your browser that you're trying to visit a website. www.appleguideweb.com is a server that you're trying to access. Think of the server as a computer that's openly available on the internet. Now, your computer, through your browser, will scour the internet for that computer. And then everything after appleguideweb.com is a file path to the site you're visiting. Think of how you save a Microsoft Word document to your desktop. You open the save window and you navigate to your desktop. How you navigate to your desktop is a file path for your Word document. So why might the URL be important? This link is a direct path to what you're looking at. So in the case that you want to share the website you're looking at with someone else, you can send them the URL which will get them to the same page you're on. Searching the web is one of the top things to do in a browser. Google gets 5.6 billion searches a day. In most modern browsers, you can type your searches into the address bar, but you may still find a dedicated search bar. For most browsers, you will find Google as your default search engine. Somewhere in all the browser settings, you should be able to change your default browser to another service such as DuckDuckGo, Bing, or Yahoo. If you find yourself multitasking or wanting to keep pages open for later, you can use windows and tabs to organize the pages you have open. With a browser window, you can move it around the screen or minimize it to save it for later. Tabs are helpful for opening multiple pages in one window. With most browsers, you can drag the tab off the window, which will create a new window, with that tab being the only page. You can also drag tabs between multiple windows. Your home page is a website you are taken to when you open a new window or tab. This page is set by default by the browser, but can be changed in your browser's settings. Bookmarks are a helpful way for storing sites that you access often. Typically, bookmarks are represented by a star. When you create a bookmark, you can find them in your favorites bar, found under the address bar, or the bookmark menu, hidden somewhere in the browser's menus. When navigating the web, you will at some point in time find yourself in or downloading something, such as a Word document, PDF, or an application. Somewhere in your browser is a download manager. Sometimes it's stationary somewhere next to the address bar, and with others, it appears only when you are actually downloading something. The default location for downloaded files is on your computer's local downloads folder, which can be changed in your browser's settings. Each browser has some sort of privacy settings. I'm only going to cover the features that span all of the top browsers, starting with sharing access to your computer's devices. Before a website can have access to your computer's internal camera and or microphone, you will have to give the site permission via a pop-up request from your browser. You can popcorn through multiple sites over the course of the day, and at some point in time you may need to refer to a site that you previously visited. Each browser keeps track of your browsing history, creating a timeline of all the sites that you have visited in the past. This data can be helpful for you to retrieve a site from your past and for your browser to recommend sites that you visit often. Websites use cookies to remember who you are. Between your browser and the website you're on, an ID code is created, which is then used so the website knows 
when you are on their site. Take Amazon, for example, a company that heavily relies on cookies. When you go to Amazon's website and you sign in with your Amazon account, click the Remember Me toggle. Then, the next time you go to Amazon and see that you were previously signed in, so it will then sign you back into your account. Amazon uses the same technology to keep track of shopping carts and products that you looked at recently in order to make recommendations. Each browser has a different name for private browsing, like private window or incognito browser, but all are essentially do the same thing. A private browser window will save your browsing data, like your history and cookies, until you close a window. At that point, your histories and cookies collected in the private browsing window will be deleted. So browsers have a lot of components that go into giving you a feature-packed and user-friendly web surfing experience. Knowing that these features are available to you may come in handy when you want to go back to a site that you were on a week ago, want to save a page that you go to often by making a bookmark, or managing tabs and windows when multitasking. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more content like this. You can continue exploring Apple Guide content on our website, appleguideweb.com, and stay up to date with the latest posts by following at Apple Guide Web on all social media platforms. Thanks for watching.